Thank you, Tommy. Recently, this network broadcast an editorial in which our station, WXYZZ, attacked the National Aeronautics and Space Administration for allowing the 84-ton Skylab to fall uncontrolled to the Earth. Now, as you know, it is the policy of this station to invite qualified spokesmen to speak in rebuttal. Here tonight, with an opposing view in favor of Skylab crashing to Earth, is Mr. Floyd R. Turbo, Mr. Turbo. Turbo of the American species. Recently, this cow chip kicking station <laughs> says that we should take precautions against Skylab falling on us. This raises the question kiss my nose cone. If we're going to worry about stuff falling out of the sky, then what will we do next? Stick diapers on pigeons? <laughs> I mean, an 84-ton hunk of metal falling from the sky is easier to jump out of the way from than pigeon drizzle. <laughs> and if Skylab hits you, you won't have to get your suit clean. Maybe we'll be lucky and Skylab will fall on a cow pasture and we could get instant Burger Kings. <laughs> Maybe it'll land on the Dodgers. Something's got to wake them up. <laughs> Maybe it'll land on NBC. They could use a hit. <laughs> and, and so what if it crashes on Russia? They got women weightlifters who can catch it. <laughs> now, last year, the Russian Skylab crashed in Canada. And that means we're already a year behind them and Skylab crashes. <laughs> I hope it falls on Harvey Doolash, my next door neighbor who's be keeping me up nights with all the noise while he's breaking in his new wife on their honeymoon. <laughs> I mean, if NASA really wants to keep Skylab up, why don't they ask the oil companies for some advice? They don't have any problem keeping the gas prices up. Some people... Say Skylab crashing proves that space travel is too dangerous. Bull squat. <laughs> My brother traveled in space. He hits the ride in the wheel well of a 727 and he's in fine shape. Although he does sleep in a blender. <laughs> they should never have sent up those Skylabs in the first place. <laughs> Suppose they screw up in space and rear-end our Big Dipper. I mean, suppose they slam into the planet of the apes. There'll be bananas flying all over the place. I mean, what good is a lab in the sky? If God had meant man to fly, how come he never gave us a lift to the airport? I mean, we spent billions to put guys up in space floating around drinking Tang. And they went to the bathroom in their suits for a month. <laughs> Speaking of that, I think my mailman used to be in the space program. I heard him tell my wife that she sure did like that moon tang. <laughs> I, never... I never trusted those rocket scientists. I'll bet none of them even have a, even not one of them. I'm not a public speaker. I'm just here as a citizen. <laughs> I'll bet none of those rocket scientists ever had a test chat to chest. <laughs> Let's go on. I'm running a little long anyway. If Na and if NASA is such a big aerospace big shot, how come they aren't offering half-price coupons like the other airlines? <laughs> I say we should never have gone to the moon and that Neil Armstrong should have stayed in the linoleum business where he belonged. 
They say our astronauts are weightless in space. If that leaks out pretty soon, peep fat people will want to orbit the Earth. Do you, do you know how much money it will take to launch Orson Welles? I, for one, do not want to see Kate Smith's moon come over my mountain. <laughs> 